the session. Uh, it's it's time to start. I think the others will join, but we can uh, 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 shortly start. Uh, hope you can see my screen now with a, with a welcome presentation. Uh, this is session uh, about focus on requirements collections in, re in relation to, to EOS portal. Um, I'm Thomas Szepienius. I work in Cypronet. I'm involved in the in the EOS hub from the uh, from the part which is responsible for the uh, for the mar uh, marketplace and portal. Uh, yeah, some few words uh, to begin about the session. Uh, please keep in mind that, that all the sessions, uh, so also this one is uh, recorded, um, and the links to the recording will be will be available. Uh, please do not activate microphones, even if you have rights. Um, the, 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 video, the video option should be uh, only for, uh, for, the, for the speakers. Uh, for the questions in the session, we activated Slido for, uh, for the session, so usual uh, uh, link, event uh, name is yours half week, of course, and then you can select the, uh, the, the session name, and then you can ask uh, the, the questions there. And vote for the questions. We will have a Q and A uh, session uh, short uh, the, after each presentation, so you will be able to uh, to ask questions there for for those questions which are uh, most voted. Uh, also, uh, in the in the slide, though, there is a who activated with uh, with uh, additional questions as this is idea to collect. Uh, uh, the, the additional information so the, the session is uh, small we, we couldn't put all the contributions here so um, uh, but we, but we know there are many uh, contributions relevant to the uh, to this uh, requirements collection uh, actions around use portal so uh, this pool uh, this pool will give you the, the the option to to contribute with your materials with your uh, use cases collected uh, and documented somewhere. So uh, the question in the poll is what are the existing materials that might be useful as a source of requirement for your portal? So uh, please uh, report there. Also, you can put there the contact for the relevant people in, the, uh, in your project or your initiatives. Uh, so uh, this, uh, this is information will be gathered and uh, passed to the uh, to the ongoing actions on, on requirements collection. For the agenda today, uh, we have four speakers. Uh, the first was meant to be uh, Bartosz Wilk from Cyphonet, but he contacted me uh, yesterday evening that he had some rapid uh, medical action with, with a child, so he cannot join. It's nothing serious, so don't worry about him. But still, he had to be um, uh, and in some place I couldn't connect. So he asked me to take over his presentation. So I will present uh, the EOS portal developments uh, uh, in EOS Hub. So kind of uh, contribution of uh, from the EOS Hub to the uh, to the EOS portal. So uh, in fact, the agenda is built in the way that we are starting with EOS portal to explain somehow where we are. And we will end up with a specific EOS portal requirements collection process that are uh, that are uh, currently ongoing in EOS and hence, and this will be presented uh, uh, by Sarah Garavelli. And uh, in the middle of the session, we have uh, two uh, broader uh, presentations which show the, 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 the broader concept of uh, requirements collection and collecting experience that we're working with with people. So uh, Gergeri Shipos will give us uh, the overview of, of uh, experience from research infrastructures and Martin Kuchenik will give us uh, the, the business perspective from the, uh, from the digital innovation hub that he was uh, uh, involved. 
Uh, so yeah, that's that's the four uh, speakers, uh, four presentations, and as I said, uh, after each presentation we will switch to Slido, and uh, and uh, and then you know read uh, or give the the, the author uh, right to 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 ask the question and have a little discussion. Uh, all right. If you have some immediate uh, stuff, especially technical, you can you can also uh, put this in the chat. Uh, we have Diego with us uh, that that he is able to uh, to help. Okay, that's uh, that's the introduction. So so now I will switch to uh, to the first presentation, which is given by me. But uh, the real author of, of this was uh, was Bartos. All right. I hope you see the slides. So, um, so uh, the 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 idea of this presentation is to show the EOS Hub contribution to the uh, to the e portal. I will show you also some um, uh, some some insight of uh, uh, of how EOS portal was uh, was initially uh, implemented. What are the source and how the different contributions uh, fit into the, the the whole concept uh, of, of a portal? So um, so again, I mean, this was uh, probably shown for a few times. How we understand the, the, the EOS portal. It's a the, the delivery channel that connects the demand side and the supplier side uh, with, a, with a context of all, as we say today, EOS resources. So, so uh, services, data, and other uh, scientific outputs. So, uh, so this meant to be kind of a, uh, of, a, of a helping place. Uh, helping tool that uh, that connects the demand side and su uh, supply side. So uh, still, uh, I think in the in the current version of the portal, which is uh, available EOS Portal EU for uh, those who, who who forgot the URL, uh, is that uh, uh, still like a history is visible here, uh, and it's important that uh, at the at November 2018, when we launched uh, uh, the portal, there was a collaboration between different projects. And so, so there was no single project that delivered this, but uh, uh, a few different uh, uh, initiatives, different projects that contributed to the, uh, to, the, uh, to the EOS portal in various ways. So uh, the, from the technical part, that was uh, mostly visible uh, was the uh, uh, infracentral uh, project. Let's put it. Infracentral project uh, and EOS Hub, and and uh, uh, from there we had already existing catalog and the marketplace, and also there was a, a EOS pilot who contributed a lot to the. To the understanding the, the rules of participation and other materials, and also open air, uh, whose uh, mission was uh, to focus uh, on scientific data. But from the, I mean, portal point of view, there was uh, like a, two different places, catalog and the marketplace, that had a separate set of uh, of services, and uh, and a slightly different uh, I mean, understanding of them also. So, uh, so the, the the huge amount of energy was uh, was spent to create the the, the, the integrated one, uh, which is which you can see now online. So you have a, a integrated view of the catalog and the marketplace with combined uh, a standardized description of uh, of the of the services, which are supplied together with uh, with, with both teams. Which are currently working uh, together in EOS Enhanced project. About EOS Enhanced project, you will learn uh, slightly more uh, on Sarah presentation. 
at the end. But now it's important that uh, the, 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 the EOS portal is still very, uh, I mean, converging into integrating the, the, the existing components uh, and also trying to achieve the, 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 the seamless experience. So now uh, I will I will go through a few uh, ideas that uh, are are contributed are contributions from the EOS Hub project. So to understand uh, uh, this, you you may see that uh, EOS Hub project was always um, uh, focused on the on the services and service uh, service delivery. So uh, the the idea of the of the marketplace with a, with a full support of uh, of uh, federated processes was well, always in the core of the EOS Hub project. So that also the contribution uh, to the EOS portal from EOS Hub was was mostly focused on uh, on services and some other partners uh, contributed to the uh, to the to the other parts as well. So, so the, uh, the 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 first important contribution was that uh, besides the, the the service description of the services that we have already um, uh, already in the in the portal, and it was also um, the standardized service description template was a contribution of, of Infra Central later uh, co-developed. Uh, we also add added the uh, service offers that was the that was the uh, you know configuration of the, of the ordering so uh, those service offers make the uh, uh, make the services um, easier to grasp in a technical sense uh, by specifying what exactly you order what are the conditions of uh, of the of the service delivery that can be adapted for the for the particular uh, uh, users or customers, uh, so so you can see the the, the service offer are displayed now uh, for the uh, for the uh, for the services that of course had it because uh, it's not uh, obligation. I mean, this is an extension, so you can have a service in the in the in the, in the market in the portal uh, uh, without or with offers. So the offers are connected with with, with order. Um, it works, I think, best with um, uh, with a, with a infrastructural services, with technical services, and you have a, a lot of parameters uh, which are purely purely technical. So so you, what you can see now is a is a user view, but also uh, the, the portal offers and uh, the parameterization from the uh, supplier side. So this is configuration of the of, of the orders um, available for the for the provider. So you can uh, the provider can uh, 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 modify the existing offers and manage them in the in the way they like. Uh, also, uh, interesting track, and this is slightly related to the to the business perspective, was a uh, was a piloting uh, something which is related to the uh, pay for use models uh, uh, in the portal. Uh, so, uh, so we implemented the use case with uh, Helix Nebula for vouchers, which are also uh, visible as, a, as, a, as an extension. So. Uh, this mechanism is linked, and also this was for, for piloting uh, non-free offers uh, that can be available in the in the EOS portal. Uh, the other side of, of the contribution was to uh, was a kind of a, a reaction for the for the many voices that uh, that researchers uh, need to have some some uh, some way to first uh, group themselves together in the research uh, teams, and also that uh, usually uh, those teams uh, require more than one service. They require plenty of different services that, that that can work together for for them. So that was the initial idea behind the uh, the, the research project. Uh, the, the project you can uh, just create in the in the uh, in the catalog and marketplace space, 
uh, you can configure them, provide information. So there will be uh, the simplification of, uh, of ordering later coming based on, uh, based on this information. And you can see that uh, in, the, in, the, in the project, you can have a, a single user project, which is just a personal project. But also you can, uh, you can configure uh, you know, the research group uh, there. And uh, in future, the idea is that we'll be connected with the service provider to give the, the permission to, to use the, the resources on access. Um, so, uh, so when you created this, you can add to the, to the project various uh, services that you need and track the, uh, the, track the state and, uh, and uh, state of, uh, of, of, of ordering. Uh, also, uh, for the for the projects, uh, EOS Portal offers the, the 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 support, which is also also embedded in the in the portal. So uh, we are aware that this is kind of an initial uh, step towards uh, supporting research groups, and uh, this probably will evolve in time into something more tangible. And also more uh, integrated with the with the service providers. Uh, as a, almost uh, the last uh, features, I have a, like a recently uh, almost published uh, the, the the feature, which is uh, which is possibility to create a white label marketplaces. This is the answer for the uh, for the ideas that that maybe it's not a good idea to have a the, the integrated marketplace in one uh, one place, but uh, but uh, the, there might be an option to have a, a multiple constellation of uh, of the services, as as, as we say, EOS is uh, is uh, uh, there are services that integrate services, and uh, the, there is a, a a lot of uh, few levels of uh, of uh, of those um, integration. So uh, white label marketplace, uh, it's a kind of a, a step in this direction. Uh, we, can, we can, in the same scheme, uh, share the services and related processes. Because uh, as I mentioned before, EOS Hub is, uh, is focused on, on, on processes. So uh, the providers that offers uh, more than one service can can create this the separate view um, and and present it in the in the white label way so so with uh, with uh, the own branding. But this is better uh, if you're interested with this feature, uh, you can contact uh, EOS Hub team uh, for this. There are also some other improvements like um, uh, optimized user experience. There is a lot of work uh, around this. Uh, alignment with operational processes like uh, um, cap capacity management, like uh, issues uh, management, and so on. There is an API for ordering. Um, so for the supplier that want to uh, manage orders, the user can, can do this in a, in a portal. But from the uh, provider's point of view, uh, there is API. And also, we have a reference implementation for this API. So it's um, almost uh, directly you can go there and, and uh, manage the, the, the orders. Also, there was, there was a feature added recently uh, to compare between services based, based on the SDT. But, uh, and the last one was, was developed in, uh, in the frame of, of Enhance. So for the conclusions, uh, um, I want to uh, stress here that and this is somehow visible from the from the results that uh, EOS Hub's contribution to EOS Portal was always focused on delivery of services, and that's why I mean there's so much uh, so much focus on uh, on orders on the, the the professional way to deal with uh, with uh, operational processes, uh, and uh, and that, that was all that was the initial uh, idea of uh, of the project. So, um, of course, we, we assess the user portal. It's always the value. It's mostly not in the portal itself. It's just an entry point or, or a marketplace or, or something. But, but uh, I mean, the quality is in the, in the services. 
So uh, I think in the in the future, EOS we should put a lot of attention on the on the quality of uh, of services and how they are supported, how they are delivered, and so on. And then we can we can integrate them with a, uh, with a, with a good quality. Um, and uh, and then my last uh, uh, remark at the end is that uh, currently Porter is COVID developed between EOS Hub, uh, EOS uh, Hub and EOS Enhanced. This is a schema that that uh, both projects contribute uh, to the uh, uh, to the portal. EOS Cap is operating this, and uh, for the for the requirements collection, there is uh, I mean, all people involved. I think they are aware that uh, the the new requirements comes. This is only beginning, uh, and we defined uh, the new phases of EOS, so the portal will uh, also. Um, go in the direction uh, to fit the, the, the understanding of EOS and the, the, the more value for users. Thank you. So, okay, so, so now I can change my hat to the, uh, from presenter to the, uh, to the chair of the session. So, so we have a Q&A session. So maybe uh, I can ask, uh, Sarah, can I ask you to, 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 to share the session after my presentation. Yeah, you should see the Slido uh, Q&A, right? So at the moment there are no questions in, in Slido. Mm -hmm. So please, if you have any questions, enter them on, on Slido. There was a comment in the chat from Sai, I don't know, if you want to pick it up while people enter their question. I don't know if Sai you want to say, want to comment. Mm -hmm. Can you can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. No, it was just a comment because basically well one you mentioned pay for use and two, we did have an issue with an ISO 27K training request that came through the system and requesting it and then i realized like later when i was kind of dealing with the ticket that the generic template made the training look as if it was free so we had to kind of do uh, an ad hoc update to the to the text on the portal so it didn't make it seem like the iso 27k trainings that we offer and which then also applies to the finsm trainings that it shouldn't be made to seem like those were those were free services or sponsored services through the EOSC or whatever. So it was kind of like a miscommunication that we ended up having to deal with the back end. So since you mentioned that you had this kind of pay for use um, prototype or proof of concept, I was thinking, well, I might as well bring that up to uh, the attention that maybe we can use the trainings also as a mechanism for testing the pay for use option that was it mm -hmm. yeah thanks for for raising this up i, I think this shows that uh, uh, that uh, uh, services related to the training uh, need some special attention and and probably they should be uh, dealt with a, with a different way than, than the, the infrastructure services Okay, I see. I see the uh, the question from uh, from Andra Hinola uh, uh, that mentioning the data search engine is missing. Uh, so I can answer on this. Um, uh, so uh, so this is this is true. Um, and this is perfect true. And uh, uh, and uh, in fact the. The, the, the questions, uh, the question or remark we have, we, we hear uh, quite often, and probably uh, this is also uh, the, the the functionality that would contribute the most to the to the value to the portal. Um, however, I mean it's not there yet. Of course, in the in the extension of the portal, in the plan, it is planned to integrate search engine. But somehow um, uh, the, the idea of portal development is that we are um, uh, we are 
uh, we are integrating something which is developed by by some projects. So, so uh, from, from what, what I know, the the open air is is almost ready to 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 provide this contribution in some way. Uh, okay, uh, Kostas, can you can you maybe uh, speak up and uh, give the background of your question? That would be maybe simpler. Yes, um, as you all know, the, uh, there's been a huge discussion about the resource or service description templates, and the which is the um, the required information that one needs to um, let's say. Uh, provide in order to onboard their resources or services. And yesterday there was a, um, a presentation by, uh, for the, uh, exactly by in the session about onboarding from uh, Jorge Sanchez of, from EOS and Hans, and he presented what, the, what is now called Profiles uh, version 3.0. In essence, this is the new version of the service description templates. And there's been quite some discussion discussion going around that we need to at, at some point let's say converge and use the same templates in order to onboard services and present services in the portal or portals that there may exist. The uh, the vision is that there is going to be uh, else can enhance and then by uh, extension uh, the, the new project uh, from Infer03 is going to produce a registry of all the resources including services, uh, data sets, data providers, everything described, let's say, with one common profile. And from then onwards, uh, with extensions for each specific field, for data sets, for example. And my question uh, with respect to the portal is, if you have in your roadmap or in your timeline, when you, do you expect that you, have, you will have adopted the new profile version 3.0? Okay, so uh, so uh, so this uh, template description, uh, which are it, it's evolving. Yeah, that's that's the point. I mean, the, the new version was uh, was announced uh, uh, quite recently, and uh, currently in the uh, in the EOS enhanced there is a discussion how to converge because I mean th th this is uh, uh, this convergence into the um, common template is is I think on the way from from some kind of time and we are uh, and, and and the convergence was was achieved on the previous version of uh, service description template but we have new one now so it will take time to uh, to uh, to to implement I don't I can give you the, the specific date because it's not uh, decided yet but uh, it's uh, it's still uh, on the agenda how quickly we should adapt this into the, the portal and how what sh how the migration should uh, should work okay um, i think we need to uh, switch to uh, to another uh, another presentation uh, maybe maybe at the end of the session we'll take uh, additional questions uh, that just appeared. Okay, so I'd like to introduce uh, uh, Gerga Ishikos, um, who will give us the, the the overview, as I said, a little bit broader, the uh, a little bit broader perspective on the on the EOSC uh, and the and the EOSC and the portal that uh, and the, the effect portal. Uh, this perspective comes from the EOS Hub experience on, uh, on working with research infrastructures. Thank you. Can you see my slides? Yes, I can see. Yeah, okay, great. So thank you for inviting me for this session. I will give a brief overview of the experiences we had in EOS Hub concerning the work with research infrastructures and particularly working with them in the work package eight uh, which I coordinate and which is titled uh, Competence Centers. And let me show you what I'm going to talk about. So I will talk about what are the competence centers and how they fit into EOS Hub. Then the working approach that we adopted 
in the competence centers to work and engage with uh, research infrastructure, research infrastructures, and focusing on the use cases they had for the project and the requirements that we captured and how we captured them. I will show two specific use cases from two of the competence centers, one from atmospheric physics, the other is from earth sciences, seismology. And I will close with, with a summary. So let me start with the introduction of the competence centers in EOS Hub, which as I said, it's a dedicated work package, work package eight. <clears throat> and the main purpose of the competence centers is to be a kind of playground or test ground for research infrastructures to integrate services with the so-called federation and common services stack of the EOSC Hub project. This federation and common services stack includes roughly four areas, which you can see here, federation services uh, concerning user authentication, authorization, accounting of use, monitoring of service availability, reliability, some added value services and basic infrastructure services that all fit more into the handling big compute, big storage and data management uh, in open science. And then some kind of repository and additional services that help providers share items and distribute items towards their audiences. The competence centers integrate with these federation and common services in order to co-develop what we call a thematic service, which is basically a science discipline specific online service that's available through the EOS portal for users for uptake. So the ultimate goal of the competence centers is to see which of these underlying federation and common services fit for their particular use case, do the testing, do the integration, and then push out these thematic services into the EOS space for uptake within different disciplines. In parallel with that, or as part of this work, the competence centers also deliver kind of promotion and training in order to engage with early adopters, test users, from whom they can gather feedback, they can gather design guidances, requirements for the further development to take those on board and then to deliver the final products through the EOS portal. So ultimately, the life cycle of competence centers is to set up and run proof of concepts with integration of these common and federation services, conduct pilots with the involvement of early adopter users, prepare the production environments, and then right now we are working with many of those on defining business models for the operation of these services beyond the end of the EOS Hub project. So who are the competence centers or what subject areas they cover? We started with eight competence centers in 2018 at the start of EOSC Hub. These competence centers have been selected through an open process that was conducted during the preparation of the EOSC Hub proposal. Through this open call, we received more than 30 applications, many from uh, research infrastructures from the S3 landscape, and we selected eight of those competence centers into the proposal. Actually, they cover 10 research groups because the marine links to two research groups as well as the uh, ICOS EATR fit into a carbon cycle uh, competence center. So you have 10 of these research groups. You can see here that many link to the S3 landmark or, or S3 project from the uh, European uh, research infrastructure uh, landscape. And in terms of the coverage, these eight competence centers cover 36 institutes and they each more or less correspond to one full-time equivalent or roughly 32 person months for the three years of the project. You can see here that we have a kind of balance between our, our coverage of uh, life sciences, physical sciences, environmental sciences, and, and uh, energy sciences, but you can see that earth sciences or environmental sciences dominate the landscape. Besides these eight pre-selected competence centers, we also onboarded uh, uh, end of 2019, early 2020, 20, 13 additional early adopter pilots, which act very similarly to competence centers. They 
will integrate or are integrating with the common and federation services in order to uh, deliver thematic services. So how we do the work in the project actually. So each competence center is basically a group of institutes that is a mix of different expertises. On one hand, we have pure science or research institutes who more or less define the use cases and define requirements. We have service providers which are expert on specific uh, common or federation services that are required for that particular community thematic service. And we have software providers or call them technology providers who are able to further develop certain software code uh, in order to fit into the tech, uh, thematic service. And what each of these small consortia did in Work Package 8 or are doing in Work Package 8, we started with service planning and design, which I said was already based on a pre selection of competence centers in the proposal preparation. So we had already a relatively good understanding of the use cases and the systems that these competence centers want to put in place, but we further refined those through regular teleconference and face to face meetings. We captured those use cases on Confluence pages, which form a so-called community requirement database, which is a database we set up in 2018. We allocated one Confluence page for each of the competence centers. These Confluence pages capture exactly the same structure for each competence center, which is basically what's the ambition of the scientific community in the project, what are the use cases that define the work plan? The use cases basically cover the scientific challenges that the community is facing, break those scientific challenges into IT challenges and data management and open science challenges, and then map those challenges onto specific services in the portfolio of EOS Hub and articulate specific requirements that we know are there to satisfy the use cases. And these requirements can be either technical requirements in terms of functionality, usability of a service, or can be capacity requirements, which just scaling up the backend of, of a certain provider. Uh, and also capture the validation plan. So after these requirements are met, what, how the, the, the system will be validated. So we worked with each of the competence center on the setup of such requirement database entries and capture the technical and capacity requirements in JIRA tickets that are linked to each of these entries. So Confluence and JIRA were the main tools that we use for the requirement gathering, extraction, and refinement. And these were the tools that we used to interface this activity with the other work packages of the project where there are additional providers and developers who can help us resolve these, uh, these requirements. Through this work, through this iterative work, we produced first uh, the page itself, the, the Confluence pages and the Jira tickets. And then we worked on the setup of the proof of concepts, which basically meant that these thematic services started to be integrated with the different common and federation services offer, offered by the project. And here I show you a snapshot of a, what we call a service integration matrix or service assessment matrix that we keep as a live document where we indicate with different colors the interest of a certain competence center in the different common and federation services offered by the project. You can see these services are, are covering compute data and AI areas. And also there are services from outside the project. And the different colors are, I will show you later what they mean, but basically indicate how a community is moving forward with the integration, the testing, the validation of a certain technology in its own, tech, uh, in its own thematic service setup. Um, if you are interested, you can read about this approach. You can read the content of these uh, use cases and requirements and also have a snapshot of this service integration matrix in the uh, deliverable 8.1, which was published, I think, in January, February this year. Uh, and you can find a link on the web page. Um, the ultimate goal, as I said, is to 
validate working setups, working integrations, and to push thematic services into the EOSC space. And such thematic services have been already pushed from three, from four competence centers from the fusion ASCAP, marine and disaster mitigation, and additional compute services are also made available through the EOSC portal from three of the Elixir compute sites. So let me just zoom a bit into each of the competence centers, the eight competence centers, to give you a glimpse of the challenges, the use cases that they defined for the project in order to show you the diversity of cases that we had to work with, and also to show you a diversity or a mix of the underlying services that were considered or are considered by these competence centers to integrate with. So the Elixir Competence Center aims to establish a federation of cloud resources across the Elixir nodes in order to have them replicate Elixir core data sets and applications into the different nodes in order to, to uh, enable user access within the Elixir countries. The Fusion Competence Center is working on computational workflows that should be deployed on federated compute resources that pool data together from federated data environments from federated repositories that have been accumulating data for many, many years in the different fusion centers. The Marine Competence Center, which includes two groups, the EuroArgo and CDataNet, have slightly different use cases. The EuroArgo use case is having a data, what they call subscription service, where users can subscribe themselves to data that meets certain criteria or characteristics, and the system should deliver those into their personal uh, data space for access and then computation. The C data net community is to set up a, a virtual research environment in, in a infrastructure as a service cloud, which gather data from different dis distributed repositories uh, from the C domain and then have them uh, perform computation on top of those federated data. The ASCA 3D Competence Center is setting up or set up already basically a web portal which operates as a i like to refer to that as a data web shop uh, where users can search data based on metadata can put them into a kind of a shopping cart then check out the data either for download onto the client computer or download them into a cloud environment where they can run computational applications on top of that checked out data EPOS Orpheus Competence Center is working with seismic data centers which need to be able to replicate data among themselves and need to enable users to pull data into a computational environment which is based on Jupiter in order to perform custom analysis. The Radio Astronomy Competence Center wants to do a similar setup but working on predefined workflows that the users, uh, scientists can choose from in order to transform instrument data into higher level science ready data products. The ICOS and ELTER uh, competence center, which is two different groups both in, uh, in atmospheric uh, research. The ICOS community integrated an ICOS web portal with analysis tools and compute resources uh, and data staging resources to enable compute analysis. The ELTER is experimenting with Jupyter and defines uh, workflows in Jupyter that users can re-execute with their own data or data pulled or imported from community repositories. And finally, the Disaster Mitigation Competence Center set up a number of web portals that they use to simulate or re-simulate historical natural hazard events in order to better understand the reasons behind why certain events occurred or occurred in a way that we uh, experienced. So that's the kind of diversity of use cases we have. And let me just show two examples, if I have time, two examples of competence centers in terms of what requirements they had. So one is the ASCA 3D, which I mentioned as a data web portal, which looks like this. It's available already through the EOS portal. And this web interface provides the users, on one hand, with a data search capability where 
users can find data based on some metadata characteristics. They can then feed this data into compute engines where they can run calculations and then browse the final results of the calculations, which for example, can look like this, which showing the, the, the enter of certain particles into the upper layers of the atmosphere. And this system uh, or this community to achieve this system articulated earlier during the project four requirements. One is to integrate a direct web portal engine with the EOS compatible AI service. The second one to integrate certain Chinese and Japanese IDPs in order to enable their collaborators from those countries to access the portal and this capability in a controlled manner. They required allocation of uh, virtual machine images and capacity behind the portal and they required a PID service for the user data and for the raw data that goes through the portal. There are a number of open questions still remaining for the remaining um, half year or one year of the project. On one hand is how to complicate the metadata structure to enable different layers of metadata as, as, as we move through pipelines. The second is to how to procure and secure cloud resources for beyond the project. Uh, as now the project is co-funding the, the, the procurement, the provisioning of cloud. So if you're interested, you can try this or apply for access in this portal through the, through the EOS marketplace. The second example I have is from the EPOS Orpheus community, which works with basically two sets of providers. On one hand, there are the seismic data centers with, which gather seismic data from a large number, hundreds of seismic st stations that cover whole Europe. There are four large data centers in the consortium. And there are compute centers which offer CPU and storage for the user analysis of those seismic data. And the challenge of this competence center is to provide a data staging layer or service or architecture that the seismic centers can use to on one hand replicate data between each other in order to make the same data set available everywhere and to enable the staging of data right into their partner compute centers where the end users, the scientists can access those data to perform custom analysis. The other challenge is to enable the users to enter through a single entry point, which provides a harmonized and harmonious access to different compute centers, irrespective of their location and setup. This entry point is foreseen to be a Jupyter notebook, which can federate data for the compute center from the respective data centers and provide an overall and overarching uh, view on the seismic data from the whole landscape. Um, there are a number of services that are integrated here and basically iRODS and B2Safe integration with Jupyter was the main requirement here. Uh, customizing Jupyter in such a way that custom libraries, APIs are available was, an, uh, was another requirement and the third one is how to mount personalized folders into Jupyter to show a customized user-specific view for each other. Right now, the different elements are, are more or less integrated. The question now, which is still uh, open, is how to harmonize the view for the user so there is a seamless experience for everyone, irrespective of the compute center that they are using. So let me go back to the service assessment matrix and let me finish with that one which is showing a bigger view of how competence centers are integrating with the different services. And here you can see that basically each cell can transition from gray through yellow to blue to red or green, which indicates the success of technology integration and validation or, or technology wasn't found suitable. And here you can see also which competence centers already produced um, services in EOS. Okay, let me close with, with this last slide, which basically just shows that in terms of the requirement management and capturing, we relied on Confluence and Jira and a lot of meetings to, to refine those and to hand those over to different technical teams. Uh, the first results are already available from the project, uh, which are services available in the EOS portal. 
these rely on five common services from the common services stack and gather the uh, number of views and orders that are handled by the respective provider teams. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Gregory, for this, uh, for this presentation. Uh, we are switching uh, now for the, uh, for the Marcin Kuchenny to be, uh, uh, we will skip uh, just for, for, I mean, I, I'm saying this, just Marcin to start sharing screen. On the slide, there is no new questions to, uh, to Gregory, especially because uh, those are uh, those after previous presentation. Okay, there is one. Um, uh, Anka, can I ask you to, to, to speak up and, and to answer a question? Yes, hello, hi, can you hear me? Hi, Anka. Um, hi, well, I think that uh, question is kind of clear. Um, I, I check very fast now the, this report uh, 8.1, which gives some general examples of uh, what the users uh, feedback were but i was wondering if we if we could uh, get some sort of detailed feed feedbacks from the users from you are they available or so uh right now that the 8.1 was user the, the kind of community requirements from each competence center uh, these kind of use cases that i explained yeah the final results of each of these competence centers will be in a d 8.2 deliverable which is due later this year in that one we will have more details on the experiences that the competence center users had with the integrations so it's coming okay great thank, thank you very much that was all Thank you. I think I, I think also that uh, the use cases that uh, Gregory shows showed that uh, we have a, a very very large need to integrate the infrastructure services with the uh, with the portals and uh, with uh, other stuff. But now it's time to switch to um, uh, to to March presentation. Uh, about a uh, quite different perspective, it's business perspective on uh, on EOSC and uh, okay, can you hear me well? From, uh, from Digital Innovation Hub. I think we can hear you well. Okay, uh, thank you. So my name is Marcin Buchenning, I'm from uh, Poznań Supercomputing Networking Center and um, uh, I'm at the EOSC DIH uh, Business Pilot Coordinator and together with SAI that is also uh, uh, present in this session, uh, we we work uh, in uh, DIH. So uh, basically, I will give just short introduction to Digital Innovation Hub and to to, to our activities and what kind of uh, business pilots we have, and uh, and then I will move to pilots requirements and some conclusions, lessons learned. Uh, okay. So uh, since uh, I, I think uh, looking at the list of the participants, not everybody were uh, yesterday doing our session where we discussed the Digital Innovation Hub itself. So just, just to, to introduce, this is uh, an ecosystem um, of a startup, SMEs, large industries, uh, also uh, researchers, um, and this foster creation of partnership and uh, stimulate innovation. So that's the main goal of Digital Innovation Hub. So uh, basically, Digital Innovation Hubs, um, uh, as, per, uh, as for the name, has, has been uh, um, here uh, for, uh, I would say, last two years, two, three years, where this, this was uh, created according to, to co commission, uh, European Commission um, definition. But this kind of activities has been uh, here in this area for last 20 years in kind of clusters or, or um, ICT clusters or, or other, other uh, innovation initiatives. Okay, so um, what are the, uh, the DIH service needs? So uh, first of all, if you look at this, this is first, uh, uh, companies was, want to test before invest. Uh, they, they want to, to uh, find the um, support uh, for the uh, new funds. Uh, they, they are looking for skills and training in different technologies and, and different services and uh, 
and they are also looking for the uh, innovation ecosystem and networking where uh, this is the world of innovators right so so our uh, so the goal of digital innovation hub is to create such uh, such ecosystem that, that, that enables these four main um, uh, features so um, if you look into what is the role of industry in EOSC, so there are different perspectives. One is the customer. So it's really about making use of existing EOSC services. Another is to become a provider. So, so to offer a new service, new, new added value service and, and um, innovation through, through the EOSC. Uh, so in this case, uh, the services would need to be onboarded. Then it is um, about the uh, partner, uh, partnership and co-development of new services. So you can imagine that that uh, um, these new services combine the, the company services plus some EO services and resources. And finally, this is about the procurement or so part participating in procurement process. So uh, about the EOS uh, Digital Innovation Hub. So um, uh, this has been created um, uh, from the scratch uh, in the EOS uh, Hub project, and it builds on uh, on the EC initiative. Uh, uh, and uh, so this is joint effort um, uh, from uh, years of, of this kind of activities from different individual infrastructure that, that came together. And uh, so, we mainly focus on the innovators of startups at MEs, but not only. Uh, so in our focus, the larger industry, larger players are, are as, as well. So, um, so we started in the project with six uh, uh, business pilots uh, uh, where they came during the, the uh, uh, initial project uh, stage that helped us to define better and uh, this digital innovation hub and to try out few and, and work out few procedures uh, uh, so to start up the, the, the VIH. And uh, so basically the idea is to persist the VIH uh, beyond the life of this um, project and uh, the different support projects uh, like EOS Hub. And this, this is the longer term uh, initiative. So basically, uh, what we are doing is we are offering the, the access to different infrastructure resources and services. We are facilitating the different partnerships and uh, we are also kind of um, industrial engagement channel uh, for, uh, for different, uh, um, also for other uh, EC related projects in this area. And uh, uh, there's a lot, lot of activities related to, with business coaching, with accelerating, with, with uh, finding uh, funding opportunities and uh, helping with developing uh, more long-term uh, business relationships and plans and, and exploitations. So um, for, for the current stage, we, we work in, 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 uh, with uh, different actors. So, with, uh, so we work out several partnerships to, uh, uh, to kind of uh, boost uh, different uh, services, uh, usage of different services, and to, to, um, uh, to extend our portfolio. So later on, I will show the example of one of these very uh, successful initiatives with uh, uh, the Deep uh, Hybrid Data Cloud, where we define together uh, one, of the, uh, one of the pilots. Uh, so we work together with several providers and also um, we partnership in larger networks uh, of uh, basically uh, mainly of, uh, of other uh, uh, DIHs in, in Europe and, and not only. So basically our uh, six initial uh, uh, pilots uh, came from different domains. So they are really uh, uh, spread over different scenarios. It is about the at the seaport uh, uh, space weather data is about uh, 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 what, what mitigation en engine. So in this case, related to security is about uh, data analysis uh, related to sport, to, to, to furniture area, also um, uh, some other areas. So this, uh, again, as I said, this, uh, this was uh, the way to <clears throat> to start with and to work out all the procedures and, and mechanisms. And, and we had a lot of lessons learned from these first six pilots. So uh, basically, uh, after this stage, we have onboarded um, another five business pilots uh, 
from uh, again different domains and uh, with different uh, uh, with perspectives and requirements and one of these is like BBC so you see we were, we were also with uh, with uh, the, the large uh, large players uh, but uh, uh, one of the example is the, here the being site uh, pilot that, that it's thanks through partnership with uh, another uh, project with the hybrid data cloud uh, project where they bring in some of the services like machine learning uh, uh, deep learning and um, you know, we, we bring uh, the resources and knowledge and some other services we combine that with the offer of the company and uh, uh, I think uh, they, they have also here a poster and, and a demo so it, it could be seen what, what they are doing in details but uh, okay um, mm. Okay, so uh, uh, coming to, to the requirements, what are the pilot requirements? So basically, the, uh, this is um, uh, 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 where they, uh, the, the initial requirements uh, from the initial pilot. So to test validate solution, scale in the cloud environment, uh, to move uh, uh, basically for some well, to move to cloud environment, to try test offered services of EOS, understand what is the, the real value or what is uh, besides all the marketing uh, let's say buzzwords what is the real things behind to build new solutions that will make use of selected uh, your services and then they, they raise interest in but this is the initial pilot so in something that was obvious for them or more easy to understand so cloud resources machine learning data uh, uh, deep learning services, testing data management solutions. So uh, many of other services were not that easy to understand, like like this kind of of, of mentioned services. So it it, it required um, well more more explanation, and it's not uh, it was not enough just to read the, the the portal, let's say description about this. So it's uh, it's also because um, these initial pilots were when the EOS hub was starting. We started uh, month one, and there was not really much offer available a month one of the project. So um, also there are interesting marketing dissemination solutions uh, uh, towards EOS users. So now what we are doing, we are expanding service offering and usage to uh, um, uh, to uh, uh, diverse. Uh, EOS services and um, so we are promoting services to different, different partnerships um, and uh, also uh, we are we, we are trying to gather the requirements from the new pilots and, and we've contacted companies okay uh, and some open points there came so um, uh, from from discussion with them so it is understanding which of the service can be in, in, in used by industrial partners. It's not trivial to understand which. So this, this relates to whole chain from resource providers to services because behind the service is, uh, usually it needs also several different resources. And sometimes even if the service is available for the company, the resource provider are not willing really to, 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 do, uh, to provide this, uh, the, 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 for example, unnecessary services. Also, what are the rules for, for them to use this service? So, uh, what are there? Are, if you look into service available in the portal, many of them are saying, okay, we are available for business usage, but in terms of uh, usage, there's nothing about potential commercial usage, business cases, nothing. So, it's not clear how and in which conditions. And uh, maybe some of them can be used in piloting phase, just in validation, maybe pre commercial. Uh, and can those services be used in commercial matter or not? If so, what are the rules, costs? And uh, can it, they be used for the companies for their R&D activities? Um, uh, uh, for example, that they want to try it out and, and develop new, new, new things. So another point, if, if they get a voucher for services usage, can they get uh, immediate response of, uh, of its value per service? So let's say we say, okay, you get a voucher for, uh, I don't know, 10K worth service of EOS. And they ask, okay, I want this and this and this service, okay, from the um, you know, portal, but uh, how much uh, does it cost in terms of this voucher? So they are not really maybe paying, but it's, it, it's, it's some value that it should be uh, quantified, right? 
and well, the things like click, click, click and go. So uh, basically, can I really just, they, they are comparing what is available here with, uh, with the offers of different service providers, you know, that are available. And, and um, well, most of the things that we have here is not click, click and go. It's click and wait one, two, three, four weeks. And uh, yeah, so that's, it's not, uh, I think, uh, the, the best maybe, uh, uh, best understood environment for them. So what is the level of reliability and accessibility of the provided services? Are, the, are there data sets available? So, and for the services, are uh, the similar services interoperable? Can I try one and then exchange with another and, and make some benchmarking of that? Or can I, how can I compare it? And um, so another, another point uh, on, on that is, can I, Compose the service really of two, three sub-services. Are they compatible? This is not uh, very, very clear uh, uh, for for them. And like uh, AI things, like standards. If this is the same standard, can I still uh, use both services? And uh, where can I? Uh, how can I understand that? Some lessons learned. Um, so EOS is a moving target, and that really does not help. And EOS Hub is also really moving target, and it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it, it is not trivial. And we are dealing here with the innovators and uh, their added value services ideas. And it's also, um, so the communication between pilots and project members, it's, you know, many of project related aspects are not always well understood, I would say. And, and, and there are really, uh, we are in the world of EOSC and there are so many buzzwords and terminology that are really very unclear in, 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 uh, for the SMEs. And uh, that leads to many confusions. And uh, so also availability, availability of uh, uh, issues with the resources. So in general, they have higher expectations, I think, than in, uh, uh, I would say, for scientific users. Um, Maybe it's not, well, maybe not, but uh, yeah, probably it's the case. Also, the, the, the general issues that are comparing us with the, uh, with the EOS uh, and its services to commercials over on the market. Um, and, um, and, and I think that's, that's the kind of an issue and we always explain uh, in our ending slide that if you can buy something with the credit card easily, then you just go there and, and, and uh, this, uh, this kind of um, EOS Digital Innovation Hub and, and EOS, it's not, it's not maybe for you if you just need, I don't know, IaaS, uh, uh, if you just need virtual machines, things like that. Uh, but if you need added value services, that's why it takes more time and there are complex services. But still, they are still uh, all the time comparing us. And uh, this is also important point about response time. Uh, like in the commercial providers, you have dashboards, you do click, 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 and you have it. And here, okay, uh, this is a matter of, of, uh, of, okay, even if you order something through portal, do you really get it in a moment or, or not? Um, and, and it's also uh, the, the feedback we got, it's not really trivial to understand what the EOS really offers and how to compare different tools available so by standard supporters, available features. So is this um, automatic way, common criteria uh, to, to, to facilitate such comparison? So this is, this is uh, you know, not clear for them. Okay, and that's it. And thank you. Uh, and I would be happy to answer any of the questions. Thank you, Martin, for sharing uh, with us this uh, perspective from, from, from business partners. I think we have a, a, a time for, for question. I see there is a question from uh, from Michelle. Uh, Michelle, can uh, yeah. Maybe it would be easier if you just uh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Thank you uh, for giving me the opportunity. Um, I, I noticed there was some really um, interesting um, use cases in the in the DR. The digital innovation hub uh, presentation and, and thank you for sharing those um, I wondered um, there is a potential risk that um, private or industrial organizations might seek to utilize EOSC resources or, 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 or 
participate in pilots only to benefit from from free resources that would reduce the costs of their r and d in quite a cynical way um, b c in particular is a is a very well funded organization and uh, I wonder is there is 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 that risk being mitigated um, are are they or, and other uh, pilot participants able to offer uh, value to the to the EOSC or to the Digital Innovation Hub in return for their participation? Yes, so basically we started um, with some of the pilots that were looking, uh, you know, for these free cloud resources plus some added value services, but this was the, the initial stage where really the the, the, the offers from the, the, the uh, EOS Hub or from EOS were not really yet uh, very well defined and we have had to start with, from something, right? So that was the easiest way, uh, you know, to start with. But now uh, what we are looking for the next pilots is, is mostly about the uh, co-development and this is mostly about, um, you know, uh, working out new added value services where, where uh, the EOSC uh, services uh, um, are part, would be a part of, okay. Uh, what are the business, uh, let's say, um, uh, kind of uh, business model? This uh, depends uh, case to case. And uh, we are now in the phase of uh, defining kind of pre-commercial agreements with, with them and kind of SLA, uh, SLAs to understand this. And uh, so that's one point, but we are not cl uh, clearly, we're not really interested uh, in just offering like, I don't know, storage on cloud resources. And that's, uh, that's uh, what, what I said also, that if they can just go and buy it uh, easily, they, they, it's, we are not the, the one that they should uh, deal with, right? So I hope that this responds to your, your questions. And we are uh, also open because you, you ask, uh, how uh, can participate and um, uh, so we are open we are we have for example we had recently the open call uh, where we are giving out vouchers and we were asking specifically for for uh, using uh, several of the services and we have like 16 interested uh, uh, applications for that and we are in evaluation phase uh, now Uh, thank you. Uh, we need to move to the to the next presentation. I see that the, there is a, a, a few questions, and in fact, the, the topics for discussion on Slido, uh, uh, most of them are uh, related to the to the previous uh, presentation. So, just uh, I think we can keep continue to uh, to discuss on this, and then we at the end of the the session we will find time to to the best both at uh, topic to, to, to discuss uh, together. And now I, I like to uh, introduce uh, uh, Sarah and uh, uh, Sarah will give us uh, the overview of the, of the process of requirements collection that are currently uh, starting in EOSC Enhance, uh, which is a new project uh, that, that takes the, the development of a, of a project. Uh, thanks, Tomasz. Uh, good morning, everyone. So I'm Sara Garavelli from Trusted Services, and today here I'm representing the EOS Canance uh, project. Um, so actually, I see that uh, we have online Carmela Azero, who is the project uh, coordinator for EOS Canance. I don't know, Carmela, if you want to say a couple of words about the project before I start. Uh, well, thank you, Sara. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, perfect. Uh, so uh, thank you very much for uh, giving the floor. Um, so EOSC Enhance uh, uh, is a recent project and uh, started in uh, uh, December uh, 2019. And uh, it is the first project uh, uh, which had, uh, uh, let's say, dedicated uh, funding uh, for the uh, EOS portal. Uh, since the first version of the EOS portal let's say, came to life from a collaboration between existing projects, uh, namely uh, InfraCentral, which ended uh, uh, last summer, um, led by EFIS, and EOSCAP, 
um, coordinated by uh, EGI. Uh, the portal, of course, reflected in its first version the fact that uh, it was the result of this collaboration, in which also OpenAir participated. And uh, so the structure of the portal uh, was for some time um, uh, building on the two pillars, the, the EOSCAP marketplace and the uh, catalog, catalog of service developed by InfraCentral. So now one of the first tasks of EOSCANANS is really to uh, integrate, let's say, and uh, recreate the portal under a uh, unique architecture, uh, which we are going to finalize and uh, also to review uh, a bit the uh, uh, description uh, of the specifications for uh, providers of uh, the resources of any kind so ranging from data and uh, computing services and training services so, uh, so to his the uh, to facilitate both for the provider to provision and to offer services through the portal for the user to discover and uh, use uh, the services offered they will run until the end of 2021 this project uh, we will onboard the new services and especially uh, the thematic platform and some aspect services um, and now Sara will talk to you about the part on collection of requirements and new requirements uh, uh, for it uh, and then there will be uh, follow-up projects uh, uh, which will um, progress in uh, further developing the portal uh, so namely it will be the resulting projects from the infra eos uh, 03 and 07 calls which are going to close in the next few weeks thank you thanks carmela for this um, introduction so as carmela said uh, uh, so one of the objective of enhance is to increase the user demand uh, so the requirements collection is a fundamental aspect of this uh, project uh, as she said, we have just started and what we have done in this month was to put together a process to collect new requirements, not only collect them, but also validate them and prioritize them. Because of course, we have a two year uh, work plan and we need to um, understand what are the priorities that we should address in this uh, uh, short time. The process is steered by EOSCANANS, but clearly the EOSCAP project and OpenAIR are strongly collaborating with us. And this process will involve different instruments. Uh, we have identified two phases for the requirements collection. So one, uh, the, the first phase is uh, for 2020. And the target audience for this requirements collection are mainly the EOSC related projects, uh, namely the 5B project, which, was, which are the regional projects, the class in the thematic cloud and the implementation projects. In phase two, 2021, we, will, we want to outreach also to individual researchers and scientists, representatives from academia and other stakeholders. So why this two-phase approach? Because we are fully aware that there are still some uh, things and some functionalities that needs to be um, fixed or improved before exposing the portal to a wider audience. And because we have already collected some uh, feedback uh, in the previous uh, stakeholder engagement events, we continuously receive some questions uh, from uh, the projects. So that's why we decided to start first from the people that are really involved in the development and then move to the actual end users of the, of the portal. Uh, the topics uh, for the requirements collection are covering the whole portal, starting from general portal announcement from each perspective, uh, dipping into the finding of the resources on the EOS portal, so how people can discover and access the services, how they can use uh, the resources on the EOS portal, so we are talking about ordering system, help desk, and so on but also how to make resources available by the EOS portal. So the service onboarding procedures, accounting procedures, and so on, as well as the general training on the portal. Uh, on this slide, so I'm not going to the details, but just to inform you that uh, uh, at this point in time, we have uh, built a process that will allow EOS can answer to have in place a continuous requirements ingestion for the project, but also a system to provide feedback to those that are 
um, expressing some requirements. There are different actors involved in this uh, process, uh, and in particular, um, I want to put the focus on uh, the reviewers' team. So this team uh, is um, built, is made up by representatives uh, of um, the project partners, and the project is participated by the um, infrastructure projects, but also by the clusters. And the idea is that this reviewers team will be in charge of prioritizing and assessing the feasibility of the requirements to build really a roadmap for the short long term development. The service owners are also important players in this process because they really are those with the knowledge about the feasibility and where we can move the new implementations. And clearly, well, the development team, and finally, last but not least, the testers. And for these, we will seek um, testers also from the communities. So we really want to engage all the stakeholders to try out the features that are implemented, to collect feedback and potential announcements. Uh, how we are going to do that? Uh, so in the next weeks, uh, we are going to publish a permanent web form on the US portal. So this will be a feature that everybody um, browsing the portal will be able to use to provide some feedback or some requests for new features. And this is something that we're going to the process that I've shown before. Then we will have a more structured approach with the US related projects. Uh, and we have prepared uh, a questionnaire targeting different uh, roles that are part of these uh, uh, that we can find in the US related projects, uh, both from the end users but also from the service provider side. This questionnaire will address, uh, will be run in forms of interviews and will be done in the time frame between May and July this year. And uh, what are we going to do with the results of the interviews? So clearly, they will, this, the results will be analyzed by the US Can Answer uh, Requirements Gathering Task Force. Uh, the outputs of this analysis will be a, a, set, a series of requirements uh, that will be put on into a roadmap. And clearly, uh, also the participants of the questionnaire will be involved in these uh, phases. Um, what's next? Uh, in addition to the questionnaires and the structured interviews, uh, we will have a series of workshops. We have already done the first workshop with the regional project uh, last week. And uh, we have this session today to kick off this activity as well. And then we have already planned a workshop with the cluster project to really focusing on uh, collecting input for new features uh, of the portal. Uh, another mean that we're going to use uh, to engage the stakeholders will be the EOSC Secretariat Interest Group on uh, Service and Research Product Catalogs. So this will be our way also to reach out to the community, to inform the community about the new developments and to gather their feedback. And this close my presentation. So I think I can go back to the slide then. Thank you, Sarah, for this um, for this presentation. Yeah, I think this is this is very important to uh, I mean, include in this in this process also all researchers, not uh, not the organized uh, infrastructures only, and you know things that that somehow are very organized, but also uh, include the, the the researchers which are spread around universities. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't see the specific question to uh, to Sarah, so I think we can spend uh, like uh, maybe uh, three more minutes uh, to to answer the most water question. And this uh, this is uh, uh, not, not a surprise uh, about uh, data search engine. Uh, because th this is, I believe, really the, 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 the most uh, wanted feature. Uh, so, the, so the discussion uh, that uh, Kat Katrina started uh, was about what will be exactly the, the, the model for, uh, for the searching. 
uh, because so we can see um, two different uh, uh, different options. Uh, we can try to make an integrated uh, search or just keep the links to the to the repositories and you know some other uh, places. So if I make it, take this question um, uh, and, and share my feel, my personal feelings about the discussion that we are having now uh, in the in the different groups, uh, I, I think the situation looks like uh, uh, the the appetite for the functionality is uh, is like between saying uh, the links are not enough because the the, the links are not adding value to the the discoverability of the of the uh, sources, uh, but uh, from other hand, uh, uh, fully integrated search, uh, it's expected to be uh, to be uh, expensive in, in implementation and also unclear how how value how much values can can add. So I mean, the usual people say I mean. The Google uh, Google already did that, yeah, and uh, the usability is uh, is not huge. Uh, so, um, so I think uh, uh, th there is a still discussion on how to find the the, the better way between those two uh, extremes. And also, as as it replies uh, uh, mentioned, uh, I mean, there is an ongoing discussion if EOS will be like a more integrated or more federated and not being linked together. So it's not only about the search engine, but, uh, but I think uh, this is general discussion of, of, of EOS itself, how much integration we need and uh, what, what, uh, what level of integration is, is possible. And now if, if uh, some other people want to share their views about this, Okay, so um, uh, thanks for this session. Uh, thanks to all the, uh, the speakers uh, for the presentations and discussion. I have, we have few uh, other subjects uh, on Slido so we can keep uh, you know, this, discussing this in Slido. Also, I see that uh, there are uh, four replies uh, to the pool. So thank you for, for, uh, for this contribution. And uh, yes, again, thank you for participation. This, this is to conclude this session.